This Friday marks the beginning of Passover. The eight day Jewish holiday commemorates the biblical story of Exodus when Hebrew slaves escaped Egypt. And joining us this morning with some traditional Passover dishes is Rifki Flinkenstein. Did I say that right? You sure did. And you are the co-director of Say It For Me. Chabad of Wilmette. There you go, a local Jewish educational organization. Thank you so much for coming in this morning. Thank this looks beautiful. Me, thank you, thank you. All right, so we're gonna talk about a traditional Seder table first. Correct. So this is typically what you will find on a traditional Seder table. Um, absolutely every single item here is dripping with traditions and meaning oh and gosh. props, if you will, to help us tell the story of the going out of Egypt over it's, three, three and a half thousand years ago, 3,300 3, years ago. It's beautiful. It looks wonderful. Thank you for bringing all of this in this morning. But I also want to talk about the traditional dish that you're going to make today. Harosset. As you see, it's prominently displayed on the Seder table. I have three varieties here. This is the chunky okay. haroset. This is the smooth one, which is basically the identical ingredients. I just uh, pulsed it up in my food processor. Okay. And this is the nut-free version. Okay. Okay. So we uh, substituted the traditional nuts with coconut. Love that. Okay. I hope you'll taste it. Afterwards. Oh, of course. Okay. So um, I chopped up one red apple. Okay. Okay. I chopped up one pear. Great. Okay. One cup of walnuts. Walnuts. Yes. Yeah. And we've got half a cup of raisins. Raisins. Okay. Hey. Those get sticky. They're getting stuck in there. Half a cup of wine, red sweet wine, which of course you can substitute for um, grape juice. Okay. If you want to. And then we have a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. Now, the most important thing is that you have to know is that this brown mixture reminds us of the mortar and the clay and the bricks oh that the Jews used when they were in e Egypt to build cities. All right. All right, let's mix it up. And um, it smells so nice. Doesn't it? Yeah, it's really, it's I was thinking wonderful. the same thing in the wine. And this needs to be refrigerated before you serve it. Okay. And um, if there's any leftovers after the Seder, you know, throw some yogurt into it. Don't, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And traditionally, this is used mm. by taking the bitter herb, dipping it into uh -huh. the charosis, and there's a lesson behind that, in that anything, any hardship, any bitterness that we have, we sure. try to look for the sweetness Aww. in it and the growth and to come out of that. We are better. running out of time here, okay. so which one can I taste? Whatever you want. Well, I want what this looks one, good. of course, this okay. one. I like the chunky one because this, I just, I wish you could smell it. It looks, uh, it it's does. amazing. It's the nutmeg, it's the nutmeg. Mm. Oh my goodness. Okay, happy that, Passover. Thank you very much. You're so welcome. Thank you for coming in. I'm no, sorry, talking about mouthful. Anyone who wants more, inf more information, go to ChabadWilmet.com. Okay. And um, all resources, fun activities for the kids, whatever you need for your Passover. There you go. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. And for more, you can visit CBSChicago.com as well. We will have a link to this story and the recipes coming up in the next few hours.